Prey merits spending the cash to see on the greatest screen conceivable. The boundless expanses of Alberta look phenomenal. There's a lot of beast disorder and activity, and the striking score by Sarah Schachner should be impacted by the biggest speakers that anyone could hope to find. All in all, the reason is Disney unloading a section in the famous Predator series on Hulu around midsummer. The first Predator featuring Arnold Schwarzenegger turns 35 this year. What preferable method for celebrating over with a prequel that is superior to any of its spin-offs? The showcasing group might have had a field day advancing this association. So for what reason is this film, similar to Disney Plus as becoming red before it, going directly to spilling with no synchronous dramatic presence? Was it since director Dan? Trachtenberg's science fiction actioner had no significant stars, other than The Predator, obviously. If you didn't subscribe to my YouTube channel, please give it a hit and press the bell icon to get updated with my channel. Liking and sharing the video motivates and helps me to grow. Now, let's continue our video. Was it on the grounds that the screenplay by Patrick Ason happens in 1719, making this a period piece? Or, on the other hand, was it because of the way that the hero's a lady and her family are local Americans, the two of which resist the pattern for motion pictures like this? Taking into account the new abrogations of movies planned for the impending delivery, I guess I ought to be grateful that Prey should be visible in a place, remembering for administrations to which I don't buy in. It is not necessarily the case that web-based features are, are terrible, simply that I generally feel bothersome prescribing films you want an agreement to see. Furthermore, this merits a dramatic delivery. Yet, I diverge. Prey charges itself as a history of the main Predator Outsider to show up on the planet. This one is fitted with somewhat retro renditions of the weapons employed by the late entertainer Kevin Peter Lobby in the main film. The Predator's usual methodology is something similar, but as it may, it is a tracker, and it's searching for prizes of prey. This provides the creature with a close companion of sorts in Naru, Golden Myth Thunder, a youthful champion who wishes to chase like the guys in her clan, including her sibling, Tanab, Dakota Beavers. Naru is prodded by the folks, who express that hunting is men's work. However, we learn she can stand her ground in a battle. She's two times as extreme as she looks, and multiple times more attended than the others. Naru is the person who first notices that there's another creature on their property. Maybe it could have something to do with that blasting dash of fire she found over Ed before. While on the hunt to find a lion that's been prowling about, Tom barely tolerates Naru tagging along. They have an easygoing sibling relationship that Myth Thunder and Beavers create almost immediately in their first scenes. Their bond adds to our worries once the real danger appears. Naru notices the skin snake imprints that do not belong to a known entity. Something scared off that lion, she tells Tob, but he's in no mood for her claim that it is a monster from childhood stories. Meanwhile, the predator works its way up the animal chain, teaching a pugnacious wolf a lesson about selling woof tickets by pulling out its spine. Naru finally gets to see it when it ruthlessly guts the bear that was chasing her and her faithful mutt. The scene with the bear is so cleverly staged that one wishes Prey hadn't given us a good look at the predator beforehand. As it yanks the bear from its pursuit, lifting it up for the kill, the invisible predator is painted into view by an outpouring of blood. Naru sees this and runs like hell. So begins a series of expertly crafted chase scenes, with our antagonist employing familiar and new ways to eviscerate its victims. There's also a callback to one of the original film's best lines, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Bleed it does, with a neon green blood that, at one point, Naru uses as war paint. Adding another element of danger, as well as fresh meat for viewers hungry for predator-based carnage is a slew of uncouth French fur trappers. When Naru stumbles upon a field of skinned buffalo, she prays over them, thinking that this is the monster's handiwork. Soon she realizes it's man, that other evil predator, 
who is responsible. Even though they agree with Naru that something otherworldly is out there, the trappers are even more villainous than the predator. So we're not sorry when they start getting splattered. Prey is a worthy successor to Arnold's original, even though there are no choppers for anyone to get to in 1719. Naru deserves to be added to the list of tough characters who can hold their own against the Predator. She uses brains and brawn in equal measure to handle all of her foes, dispatching them with gory efficiency. Nature also proves a cruel adversary, but she's ready for that as well. The film creates a portrait of her Comanche nation without othering them they are the heroes of the story, and their village teams with a sense of camaraderie. Even though the film is mostly in English, a full Comanche language version was apparently also shot in tandem. It does not endanger our suspension of disbelief. Despite the expected whine from immature males who haven't seen the movie yet but are already deeming it too woke, Predator fans will not be disappointed by Prey. It's a scary and fun amusement park ride that also elicits a surprisingly tender emotional response. When Naru finally let out the war cry she had previously been denied, I couldn't help but cheer. It's too bad I couldn't do it with an audience full of equally excited viewers.